Hello and welcome to Texture Rubbing Collage with Mr. Rogers. You might remember from before that texture is the way something feels and today we're going to use a technique called rubbing to gather that texture in a visual format by getting it on paper. So we'll go around our house or our learning area and we'll try to gather textures from around us. Then we'll use pieces of those that we gathered to create a collage. It can be something simple like your favorite animal or if you don't have a favorite animal there's always the fish. Uh, and then if you want to give yourself something a little more challenging I'm going to show you some of my imaginative process for making something completely new. I like I got this invisible guy here with these trees. So I'll show you more about that later. So let's talk about materials. You're gonna need something to rub on regular paper and something to rub with. That's crayons, which I think are the best. They're the cleanest. You can also use chalk and oil pastels. Next, you'll need some sort of construction paper to glue your pieces onto. And of course, you'll need scissors and glue for this project, like we always do when we do collage. You could use a marker, that's optional if you wanna outline some of your shapes. And then, Tape is also optional. I used that today in some of my gathering of textures. So go ahead and collect your materials, pause until you're ready, and then meet me here. All right, if you got all your stuff, let's start with the crayon. Now I can rub the crayon this way on the tip of my crayon, but I actually wanna use the side of my crayon so I can rub the largest area the quickest. So I'm gonna just peel off the paper. And if you don't wanna ruin your whole box of crayons, you can just use one crayon for this project. I'm gonna do this whole uh, project with just this purple crayon. So now I use the side of my crayon to rub on the paper and you can tell it's actually picking up a little bit of the texture of the mat that is under my paper. It looks flat, but it's actually got lots of little cuts in it because it's a cutting mat. Next, I went around my house. I found a bread basket that had this cool woven texture on it. Now you do need to help your paper to stay as still as possible. So you wanna hold it with one hand while you're rubbing with the other hand and try to make sure the thing that you are gonna rub doesn't move, uh, uh, but it could still look cool. So next I went over to the clock radio. This one was not gonna move, it, it stayed still. So I got a pretty good texture out of that. Vent covers are a good source of texture. Uh, this one gave me a kind of a grid pattern which I ended up using later. I was pretty happy with this. And patio furniture, that's another great source of texture. It's got this wiry texture here. Make sure you get all your leaves or sticks out of it. And then go ahead and rub. You get this cool wavy kind of pattern. It looks kind of like a fence too or scales. Now, when you're gonna do furniture, if you, like this is carved furniture, it's got some great textures on it. Ask an adult first before you do it. They might not want you to get crayon all over the furniture. So just check with somebody first, but if it's okay, go ahead and make your rubbings. I got some really cool patterns off of this. Look at that carved texture, yeah. So I also went around and I liked, I saw some textures in my house that I liked and uh, I thought this would be cool. So I lifted that off of, this cabinet, this little strip at the top. I found a piece of an old wreath that hadn't been thrown away yet, so I rubbed that. And then I saw this planter. This is where I used my tape. I got a couple little pieces of tape and put my paper on there so it wouldn't move. And then I came in with my crayon and was able to get a really nice texture from this planter. I was really happy with how this one turned out. It filled up the whole page. So there I go, I got all my textures and I had to sit and look at them for a second to get start getting some ideas for how to use them. So look through all your textures when you're ready and start building your collage. If you can't think of anything else to do, you can add another fish to your series. To do that, just pause the video and rewind it as many times as you need to see this. If you want to experiment and try something a little more challenging, you can start cutting out shapes and seeing how they fit together. 
So I put this strip on top of this part right here, the grate cover, and it started to look like a building. So then I added a door that seemed to come together. And then I looked around for some other parts that might fit with it. This looked like a tree to me. Maybe a tree could go on the outside of the building. This part looked like, this started to look like a shirt to me. So I put that idea off to the side, came back to it later. I'm looking around for ideas. I wanted to use more of these trees. I started cutting out these trees and I wanted to give their edges a kind of cloud-like or bush-like appearance. So I used a lot of curvy lines turning my paper quite often while cutting it. See there. So I latched onto that and I started doing more of these trees. It felt like that was turning out the way I wanted it, so that was another idea. And then I just started uh, seeing where that idea would lead. So if you start getting an idea for like a building or a house or a creature, whatever. Just see where it leads. And then I experimented with placing the shapes on my big paper, my big construction paper. And I started to see something I liked, so I started gluing down my trees. But then I had a change in my idea. And I decided to put down my t-shirt idea in the middle, and it turned into an invisible person who's just kind of chillaxing there. So then I had my glue and I started gluing those down to my final paper, my big construction paper there. A little bit at a time, taking my time with little glue dots around the edges. Being careful to get the position I wanted. And in the end, uh, I was pretty happy with what it turned out to be. Kind of an invisible person between some mystery trees. But I still had some other pieces left over, so I looked at them and decided I wanted to make a landscape with a building and a sky. To make the sky, I cut the large texture that I thought looked kind of like stars into strips, and then I glued them slightly apart from each other here. You can see I made, made them slightly smaller strips and slightly farther apart. That made a sky glued down my building and some of my other pieces. It made this kind of weird radio station or something, but I liked how it looked, so there we go. So whether you ended up with something that is more complicated or something that was fairly simple, like an, a fish, part of your fish series, I hope you had something that you are proud of, and I can't wait to see what you make. See you in the next video.